Right. Good morning, everybody. Ian and uh, Anthony, thank you very much for inviting me to speak. Um, I'm Peter Lang, a senior technology transfer engineer at UK Power Networks. I was involved in the first ele electrical energy uh, storage device commissioned at Hemsby and also provided uh, technical support for our smarter network storage project, which is the uh, the large installation of uh, Anthony referred to the six megawatts, 10 megawatt hours, which we're installing at Leighton Buzzard. So really what I want to do is just set the scene and give a feel for well, where we're at today. Now, how far, of, what is the uh, position we have in the UK with regard to actual installations? So here's my agenda. So I'll be introducing the Energy Storage Operators Forum and the DNOs because it is our networks that these uh, devices are going to get connected to, well, as well as National Grid. Um, provide an insight to how the Low Carbon Network Fund has pro provided us um, the means to make an impact on energy storage. I want to be able to show some examples of various installations and the range of the installations. Also be able to demonstrate that learning is taking place. And finally... Uh, just mention the Good Practice Guide uh, for Energy, Electrical Energy Storage, which is um, a document that well, you'll just have to wait and see. Right, so firstly, the DNOs, the Distribution Network Operators. There's six of us, and we manage the distribution networks. And those distribution networks range from 132 kV right down to the customers at 400 volts or 230 volts if you're a single-phase customer. What we don't do is we don't sell electricity, nor do we generate electricity. But storage is different, and that's why we're here today. Many of the DNOs have installed storage devices on their networks. And in May 2012, the Energy Storage Operators Forum was established to allow the operators to share their experiences and as a result, a white paper was produced, the state of charge of GB. And this is available on the internet by just, if you put into Google state of charge of GB, a copy of the doc, a link to the document will be available right at the top of the list. What it was created to do was to be able to show the, the level of installations that are connected to our network. It also gave us the, the ability to share some of our, our knowledge. And that's what the, the, the rest of my slides are really about, is just moving on from what uh, is contained in, in that white paper and providing um, so, f some food, 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 for, food for thought. So just to put it all into context, the system voltages, I've already referred to 132 kV down to the domestic customer. And I think we all know that storage can get connected at all, by customers at all these different levels. And also National Grid manages and operates the, the, uh, the transmission system. And clearly they are also very interested to understand exactly what the impact of electrical energy storage is is going to have on, um, on, the, on, the, on the whole energy network in the UK. Right, so the Low Carbon Network Fund. This was introduced by Ofgem at the uh, beginning of the, the last price control period. And many of the installations that have been, uh, energy storage installations have been funded using this fund. There are, there are a number of exceptions namely the 200 kilowatt energy storage device at Hemsby, which was funded using the IFI fund, and also the two megawatt Mitsubishi installation on Orkney, which is a third party uh, ownership, ownership uh, scheme. So as I say, the, the scheme was introduced in 2010 and it's a, it comes as two parts. You now there's a competitive part where larger projects can be scoped out and funded each year and smarter network storage 
was the uh, UK Power Networks um, project, which was funded uh, last year. Last year, well, it's been going for just over the year. But also, I think the list shows uh, Northern Power Grids, customer-led revolution, Western Power Distributions, Bristol and Falcon projects, and I'm sure there are members of the audience who are more familiar with those projects, and Phil's somewhere out there. Uh, he, he, he'll be able to tell us more detail. UK Power Networks uh, demonstrations, and then Scottish and Southern. So four of the six DNOs are already physically involved having storage connected to their networks. And a whole range of, if you want further information on any of those projects, you either visit the DNO's own website or even go to the Ofgem website. This slide is trying to represent that there has been an awful lot of activity. The different colours, I know some of them don't sh show up as clearly as, you, as I'd like, but it, it does give a, a feel for what is already uh, installed and commissioned, what's under construction, what's planned, and clearly, as with the, the lifetime of any asset, what has been de decommissioned. So you can see the, the orange six megawatts uh, for our latent buzzard installation. But smart network storage is not about the technology. What it is, it's about demonstrating the benefits can be realized and the business case can be justified. So the electricity market is a very important part of, the, of this project. Storage systems, as I think they're all very, very, very aware, are not simple assets. And they, I think this slide is just trying to give a feel for how complex the, the, the system actually are. It's not just about the core hardware that you can uh, purchase, no, that, uh, that the storage part of uh, the system. You can store the energy, and there are a whole range of different technologies, different potential suppliers, but what we've also got to do is get it connected to our electricity networks, and that connection can be just as complicated as getting the, the energy storage re really just uh, scoped out and, uh, and connected. So there we have the, um, the power conversion, the, 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 the moving from the, the DC energy, electrical energy store to the AC system that we, uh, we utilised uh, when we're at home. But then there is this, the other la layers. It's not just about controlling the system, getting the energy, energy in and out of the system. It's also about making sure the energy comes out of the system at the time that it's required. So what are the ancillary services? And uh, clearly there are new players coming into, into the market who are able to act like aggregators, joining, shall we say, small-scale energy storage together and offering it as a, a larger whole. But to maximise the benefits, these services need to be integrated together and perhaps new markets need to be identified. The benefits... Well, they range from just the demand profile, change, changing that demand profile, providing, providing voltage support, frequency support, uh, response to national grid. The installations I, I refer, uh, you saw on the map all make a difference. And their results, I think we've all seen at various conferences, so I won't dwell too much on it. But there was great interest in this Orkney installation, as it's a third-party owned installation. It provides services to various parties, both uh, Scottish and Southern Electric, and also allowing more generation to connect to the more renewables to be able to connect to those uh, networks on the Orkney Islands. So time will tell whether the market is re ready to su support the storage. So in the next few slides to show various installations and just give a feel for the complexity. 
Now the top left, I think Andrew Jones would recognize this. <laughs> Our sponsor for, for uh, one of the sponsors for this event. This is the um, um, SSC in, SSE installation at uh, Chaveley. Uh, it's a 25 kilowatt, 25 kilowatt hour um, energy storage device. I think we've all become quite familiar with the uh, Hemsby installation, which was um, provided by um, ABB. One of the more recent developments is the, um, the hybrid mobile generator, which has your traditional diesel generator on the front, but it is supported by an energy store. And I think this becomes a very friendly solution for the times when we do have our power cuts. Power cuts do occur, but at least now you could have the situation where during the night, the energy storage, the battery takes, uh, takes over and provides the, the necessary supply. So our customers do get a good night's sleep. Other installations, the larger installations, this is uh, on Lerwick, the, um, again, Scottish Sun Electric's um, uh, larger battery associated with the Lerwick power station. Northern Power Grid's um, installation at um, Darlington, which is part of their customer-led network revolution. And uh, finally, a montage of the uh, installation that we're expecting to have installed at Leighton Buzzard. The foundations are going in at the, as we speak, and I would have liked to have uh, been able to show you uh, a few slides, but uh, I'll leave that for another conference. But with this whole um, energy storage operators form, we have been able to share our experiences, and because the uh, Low Carbon Network Fund, one of the requirements for using the, the money is to share and uh, disseminate the learning that we've had uh, from, from these projects. These are just a few of the um, reports that are available. There are many more. Each of the projects is constantly providing um, what the, uh, milestones to you and me, but uh, in off-gem speak, strategic, de successful delivery reward, reward criteria. Yes, it does roll off the tongue. Uh, so you can either go to each of the DNO's own websites, go down to their innovation parts, and you'll find a whole range of uh, energy storage uh, reports. Other locations include the uh, ENA, um, Smarter uh, Grid Portal, and uh, also a lot of these reports also appear on the um, Ofgeb websites. I think we all know that uh, DEP, um, awarded grants, and Sally's here probably to tell us an awful lot more, but uh, what I would just say is that EA Technology uh, has been working with the Energy Storage Operators Forum to develop a good practice guide on electrical energy storage such that we have a framework where we can start looking at, well, how do we go about and what do we need to do to get energy storage connected to our networks? But the focus is clearly on the UK, but it's equally applicable elsewhere in the world. So what this Good Practice Guide is looking at, it will be published twice, there will be two editions, and the first edition is due this spring, and it will focus on procurement, standards, installation, safety management, but the second edition, which is, uh, seeks to provide a more holistic document looking at uh, other sources of energy storage, um, it will be written in such a way that you can dip into particular chapters as and when or whatever topic you're re really interested in. It's due to be published this time next year, so we'll see you all there. Um, you'll all be very welcome. It will, one, of the, one of the things that this Good Practice Guide, it's envisaged to become uh, an, EN, uh, an ENA engineering recommendation. So it, it, it won't be a document 
finished, dated, and uh, become a static document. The intention is, by making it an engineering recommendation, there is a process in which the, uh, the document can be refreshed as the technology and things tend to uh, do, get, do change. So hopefully I've given everybody and shown that a lot of activity is happening within the, the, the DNO com community. We do share experiences and learn from one another. That we don't know all the answers and we're prepared to try something different. And finally, we're prepared to make public guidance that we hope will assist in making storage an important asset to delivering the government's carbon targets. So thank you.